from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And I'm Robert Smith with Goth Talk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Rachel Renner, also from Richmond, Virginia, also an anarchist. And we're part of the resistance here in Richmond. And so today we're going to bring to you the news from underground. Um, so we'll start off with the first story. Rachel, would you? Mm. So, in Arizona, they won't let you touch a horse and get paid for it unless you're certified by their veterinary board, which is a bit of a hypocrisy since human massage therapists aren't required to go through medical school, but they're wanting their equine massage therapists to go through veterinary school. Yeah. The big contention point with the equine massage therapist, since they're fighting this through the courts and not trying to take on a voluntary stand that, you know, hey, pay me, I have a good reputation and all this shit, we're just going to beg for our crumbs, is that in veterinary school, they don't focus much at all on equine massage therapy. They just, you know, want to toe their bottom line and say, you know, you're certified and shit. But um, it's funny, you know, horses and ballet dancers were always very much compared, you know, in terms of being obsolete by design and having the most tendon injuries and all. And every ballet company I've ever heard of would be, you know, lost without their massage therapist. So for horses to be yeah. out there being unmassaged sounds like a bad idea all around. Yeah. But yes. <laughs> They've been sent these uh, cease and desist letters like, oh, whoa, 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 stop what you're doing. Stop providing a service that's, that's just wanted, that's needed in this market. Well, stop but, getting paid for that service. Stop getting paid for this so apparently um, you're not allowed to it's illegal it's criminal to do it for, for to trade for money for for, for exchanges for another commodity uh, but it's okay if you do it for free for horse sweat yeah for horse sweat um, so these uh, this is happening in Arizona so you have a couple of entrepreneurs who've been sent these uh, cease and desist letters uh, for practicing their trade uh, in a particular niche market yeah. a, a question to Tenarian, of course um, and so, meanwhile, the guys practicing animal husbandry haven't been told to stop jerking off horses. Yeah, and so you have a lot of interesting areas of uh, yeah, of, of skills necessary for that. But of course, uh, horse the, the owners of these particular horses um, don't want to go out of the way and, and provide these services. Maybe you know it takes a lot of time out of their schedule trying to understand how to massage horses. So they'd rather outsource that to someone who who knows how to do that. Um, you know, especially a lot of uh, working horses that they use for sports, that they use for whatever areas of um, the training that they need. A badly done massage can do more harm than good. You, know? yeah. you want somebody who understands the musculature of a horse. I mean, seriously. Yeah. And then they're asking, well, you need a you need a degree, you need a veterinary degree in order to uh, to practice your, your trade, to to give massages to, to animals. Um, and of course, this comes down from let me find the name. It's it's the vet board, the Arizona Veterinary Medical Examination Board. Uh, so of course. You're going to find, and in whatever, wherever you are, there are these particular cartels on, uh, on trade in the market that have um, that there's a monopoly on, on these particular services. So Veterinary Examination Association, for example, has a, is a cartel and that it prevents other people from wanting to trade in that particular area, in that particular skill. They'll say, well, you have to go through us. You have to be certified through us. Um, and you can, you can relate this towards like a dentistry association, American uh, Dentistry Association, American Psychological Association, Medical Association. Any association that has any ties with government is a cartel. Cosmetology, hair yeah. cutting, you know. Yeah. Even, even the periphery things where you're dealing with dead cell matter for the most part and non-lethal forms of human interaction, you know. They still want you to have that certification, so... Our one legitimate recourse is if something goes wrong to throw somebody in a cage. And who profits from that? Not really us, the big entity we call government. Right. The only reason why these associations want you to go through them is because, they, again, they have a cartel. They want you to pay them for, 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 their, for their permission, for their piece of paper that says, hey, you're certified by us. Um, because, of course, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it'll ruin their whole business, uh, their, their extortion scheme. And people were able to realize that they don't need them to begin with, that they can set up their own accreditation, private accreditation services, which kind of already exist in the most part in a lot of different areas. But, of course, when this, they're able to make this law through government, now it makes it illegal and criminal for anyone to try to, to do it and, and to compete against these associations. Uh, because, of course, they have uh, control over the, the training thereof, you know? And it seems like they're making it very marginal. I mean, the Celeste Kelly is the main person at the forefront of the lawsuit and her attorney. Um, 
that any sort of veterinary certification in the state of Arizona considered equine massage a very trivial matter. It was not a required bit of any sort of coursework. It was, it was very much a niche market that needed to be filled. And once they found out that people were filling it and were achieving acclaim, you know, and good reputations and being privately certified, it's when they stepped in and wanted their their bite. Yeah, there's no complaints though. So there's there's yeah, a non, there, there, there's, there's no intercourses. Yeah, there, yeah, there, there had been no uh, complaints that were submitted about a, a woman abusing horses or hurting them or in, in any which way manner. There was an anonymous tip, right? Of course, you can't uh, confront your accuser. Uh, this, these are the, these are this. This is how it works. You know, this is uh, different areas of uh, totalitarians that try to control your, your livelihood, the way you, you live, your, the things that you love to do, uh, and to make a trade, uh, a, a trade that could be profitable, that could uh, sustain your, your livelihood, um, your life, your, your family, your, um, your community. You know, these are the things that uh, the give back, that the creates value in those communities. But of course, we have these particular cartel, cartel associations, it limits that. Uh, you, you're only allowed to be profitable as long as it goes through them, as long as they have some of that profit in their hands as well. Um, and again, you find a lot of uh, different areas aside of the veterinary association that does that. The industry does this too. I remember there was a mall that was trying to just provide the service of just whitening your teeth. <laughs> That's it. They're not trying to drill any holes. They're not trying to uh, inject any needles in your mouth. They're not trying to take any teeth of power out. But uh, it, was, it was during the near the beginning when uh, the uh, white strips were very popular. So a lot of people thought, well, I want to be an entrepreneur. This is a really interesting business. So they created their own little uh, a store within a mall, for example, up in Northern Virginia. And they found that they were, they had the, they were sent these cease and desist letters, the same thing, by the uh, dentistry association. Because in the dentistry association, as a dentist, you make a lot of money if they go to you instead, right? You, you need to have your medical degree in order to put like plastic strips on your teeth. Um, well, any well, any dentist worth their snuff, from at least what I've heard from going to the dental school and all that, is that you don't fucking whiten your teeth because you're just stripping your teeth of a layer of enamel. So, yeah, you know what that's I mean? true. That's, that's a funny bit of proprietary shit for them to have, but you know, from what I know about Northern Virginia, <laughs> they do have enamel toothpaste, so that helps to restore and. Uh what I'm making there. on after all my years of soda drinking. <laughs> so they were trying to threaten these people, these entrepreneurs in Arizona with uh, $3,500 in fines. And of course, if you don't pay that extortion fee, you get sent to a cage or they steal your property. If you resist, mm -hmm. if you try to uh, protect your property when they're trying to uh, extort you and, and take that away from you, you go to a cage. You're threatened with violence again. Um, actually, you're also threatened with six months in a cage. So yeah, so that comes both in both, both in hand in hand. Um, and so it's, it's interesting. That's how uh, Arizona is, I guess, open-minded for business to, to borrow praise from the, that libertarian candidate. But, um, but you'll find that uh, all these cartels, all these associations are not. You know, the best way for they can make money is to eliminate competition, and the best way to eliminate competition is to do it through government. And so for me, I, I find it uh, very horribly distasteful, very disgusting, very uh, hypocritical for a business who's out there to provide a service, to provide a value, to provide a skill, would uh, backstab those particular customers still, clients, by going to the government to prevent competition so you're, you can only go through me, right? These, these are other areas of, um, of the violence in, in, in society and how they prevent these livelihoods from occurring for the first place. You need to act strangers for permission to, other, to exercise um, your trade your skills, your life would your work. <laughs> for my part, I didn't have a lot of empathy for this story at first because horses are kind of the realm of the rich. They're, they're very, you know, high maintenance animals. They require a lot of special care. I mean, they can eat themselves to death on oats if you let them and they'll ferment inside their stomach. You know, hmm. like I never went through that little girl horse phase, but um, a person I knew on Facebook brought this up and it's like, you know, well, it sounds like it's, you know, one step away from say the raw milk argument or from arguing ways that we interact with our domesticated animals. You know, that like you have to bring in a specialist, you know. Yeah. Just, it's, it's a bribe. It, it's part of the bribe culture that they're trying to bring in here under the pretext of licensing, you know. At least, you know, in countries that are not first world, they call a spade a spade. They call a bribe a bribe. This is the U.S. calling a bribe by the name of license, and that is pretty fucking disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, licenses and permits discriminates against the, the poor from competing. From uh, small businesses, from from competing against the larger ones. So of course, any business that's for a law, that's for government, uh, what they're really trying to say is that they don't want to to have choices. They don't want there to be competition to to create better value, better quality. 
Um, you know, so, so shame on those people. Shame on those businesses that advocate for government intervention in those particular market niches. Uh, they're the ones that are actually trying to rob you from from the possibilities from from what could be, from what you could be the market of tomorrow. Um, so yeah, don't uh, be fooled by these associations. A lot of them did start off to try to uh, to help people, but the moment they started uh, involving government with that, anything plus government equals corruption. <laughs> so anything uh, in these particular market niches, kind of like the guilds of um, medieval Europe, uh, creating this monopoly on these particular trades, and that's all these are now. This is just 21st century versions of them. And so yeah. I will say for the guilds, you actually, your time was not put in with money, but the time you spent learning the craft. Not to say there weren't corrupt guild owners, people that would like sweep you in if you bribed them and all that shit, but that was far less than the Catholic Church was doing, you know. Yeah. My illegitimate son is now a cardinal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How'd that happen? But yeah, yeah, it, um, it stinks of a needless step. Yeah. And anybody who has been through any sort of higher education, I hope, can empathize with that. If you are going to get involved in these uh, illicit trades, uh, practice agorism. Uh, start uh, exchanging Bitcoin. Uh, we have the pamphlets out for agorism. Start putting out around your local businesses. Start, uh, you know, talking about like not uh, disclosing this particular trade information to other people that are not should, should be privy to. Yes, where is um, the brony lobby on this? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where are those people at? <laughs> so um, yeah, so with that, um, anything else? Do you think that's a uh, wrap up? No, no, yeah, yeah. I, I hope horses in the future can be rubbed in a constructive and pleasing fashion. Yeah. It's massages. They're just touching other animals. We're trying to get out of the club to yeah. drink. Yeah. <laughs> We're about to head off to follow, which you guys should be here actually two weeks from now on the 22nd for our 1984 Aurelian Night. Uh, we're going to start off with the underground rally at 8 o'clock. A lot of talks, a lot of speeches, and then, uh, of course, the Brotherhood uh, resistance ends and then re enter the realm of. Aurelian uh, 1984 totalitarian statism, which and is... rats will eat your face. Exactly. So, uh, you guys take good care. Have a good night. See you guys at the victory party.